Well, well, welcome back, folks. So, uh, I love the buzz in the room. It's always nice when you invite 800 of your closest friends and they all come. Um, so, I hope you were as inspired by the first half of the evening as I was. I would love it if you join me in a round of applause for Luke Frazier and the American Pops Orchestra. You, you, you may have noticed that we have not had Luke Frazier and the American Pops Orchestra always uh, at the Atlantic Council dinner, so it's just such a pleasure to have you here, Luke. Um, also, do pick up your gift bags. Not only do we have Adrian's uh, constitution, and Adrian, you've left it up here, I'll bring it back to you, um, but we have a document that's almost as important as that, which is the Atlantic Council Annual Report. Uh, uh, we have a book uh, connected with our Resilience Center that's uh, a must read. Uh, and, and also, I must say, there's a foreign policy magazine with our ad in it there. Um, we're, we're, very, we're very happy for the in kind sponsorship and support we've had from foreign policy and Edelman. So, thanks to both of you. Um, uh, for 60 years, the Atlantic Council has pursued a mission bestowed upon us by our founders to advocate for and galvanize constructive U.S. leadership alongside our global friends and allies to shape the future. Thanks to so many of you in this audience, the Atlantic Council has never been as robust as it is today, yet the tests we face have probably never been quite as complex or daunting. We had strategic retreats of our board and staff in the last months, and they've produced a consensus that the Atlantic Council's work must wrestle with five interwoven, defining challenges. First, we must peacefully navigate a new era of major power competition. Second, we must address new challenges to our democracies and the surge of autocracies. Third, we must reinvigorate and perhaps even reinvent the global system of rules and institutions that the Atlantic Council's founders helped create. Fourth, we must help define anew and help execute America's role in shaping this new world. And then finally, we must harness the opportunities and manage the risks of an unprecedented era of technological change. We at the Atlantic Council don't see any of these challenges as reason for despair, but we do see that this as a call to action for all of you in this room and everything we do at the Atlantic Council. Uh, our community has faced far greater challenges uh, than this. The challenges we face are no match for the brand of leadership represented by you in this room tonight. Among you are some 800 guests from more than 45 countries, including more than 60 corporate chief executives, chairmen, and presidents, about the same number of ambassadors, countless other senior officials, business executives, media, and civil society leaders, Thank you so much for one of the most amazing communities of influence I can possibly imagine. Thank you for being here. Uh, I would particularly like to recognize our former heads of state and sitting ministers in the room with us this evening. And if you could hold your applause, and I'd like them to stand if, if they would not mind. Former Swedish Prime Minister Carl Bildt. Former Former Polish President Alexander Kwasniewski. Former Danish Prime Minister Hella Torning Schmidt. Former Danish Prime Minister and former Secretary General of NATO, Prime Minister Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Which, by the way, this shows that we're bipartisan even in Denmark. Uh, and Romanian Vice Prime Minister for Strategic Partnerships Implementation, Anna Birchall. Please stand, Anna. Give them a round of applause. And as we gather this evening to celebrate NATO, uh, 
I'd like to thank again the NATO member country ambassadors who took part in our remarkable opening procession. I know how hard your schedules are. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for representing your countries with us this evening. I also want to give a special Atlantic Council welcome to the elected um, uh, officials from both sides of the Atlantic who are with us. Congressman, and please do stand, Congressman Cohen, Congressman Rose, Congressman Waltz, Senator Alexander, and member, and, and member of the German Bundestag, Alexander Rodwan, please stand. Finally, I would like to give a salute and offer my deepest respect to the former Supreme Allied commanders who, saw you, who you saw on stage earlier this evening. General Abrial, General Clark, General Jones, General Jalwan, and General Ralston, please stand so we can salute you. And as we're recognizing military leaders, I'd also like to salute General Colin Powell, an honorary director of the Atlantic Council Board. So I, I, I was befuddled and I once asked him, so do I call you Secretary Powell or General Powell? And he said, oh, there's no question about that, it's General Powell. You, you can explain later to people why you felt that way. Um, this evening, uh, and the work would not be possible of the Atlantic Council without our community of supporters, I want to salute the co-chairs of tonight's dinner. I, I'd ask those co-chairs in attendance to stand as I read out their names. It's an incredibly impressive list, but it is a little bit of a long list. So please hold your applause until I have finished. Uh, Airbus, represented by Jeff Niddle, Adrian Arst, the Blackstone Charitable Foundation, Ahmad Chirai, Chevron, represented by Heather Culp, Edelman, represented by Richard Edelman, FedEx Corporation, Bob Gelbard, Joe Gibbs Racing, Mary Howell, KMW, represented by Bob Schultz, Leonardo, represented by Bill Lynn, Lockheed Martin, represented by Marilyn Hewson. Dave McCormick and Dina Powell. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I knew there would be some applause to interrupt at that point. Uh, MetLife, MNG group of companies, represented by Merva Gunal, representing her father, Mehmet Nazif Gunal. Please give our best to your father, Merva. Amit Oren, Penguin Random House. Raytheon, represented by John Harris. John Rogers, Chairman of the Atlantic Council. Saab, represented by Eric Smith. SAIC, represented by Nazik Keen. Southwest Holdings, represented by Tuodro Sashanafi. Textron, represented by Mary Claire Murphy. Tallis. Thomson Reuters, represented by Kate Friedrich. Zurich, represented by Francis Bouchard, which is also the first corporate sponsor of the newly named Adrian Arst uh, Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center. Please join me in a round of applause for these co-chairs. <laughs> General Jones always reminds me that vision without resources is hallucination. Uh, so so thank, thank, you for, thank you for allowing us to have a larger vision. And with that, let's keep the show going. <laughs>